What's going on guys, Matt Everett here with Lethal Camaro and today's a day of a little bit of hard work and that is installing the brand new GM front grille for the 2016-2017 Camaro. Now as you guys know, I have a 2016 2SS and the grille shouldn't be too hard to install but you do have to remove the entire front end of the car to get the new grille in place. So let's get right on into it. I don't expect this video to be short, so apologies for that. Okay guys, so to make this install easier, there's a few things you have to do. Well, you don't necessarily have to do them, but it will make it easier. So jacking the front of your car up and removing the front tires or wheels and tires are gonna be the first step that you could do to basically make it a lot easier to access a lot of the bolts and screws that you have to remove. Also getting the front end off, off the ground will allow you to unscrew some of the lower portion bolts that you will have to remove to disconnect the front end from the underneath skirt. Um, across the board. So, you can just see, as you can see, I have my jack stand. I am using my wheel stops, I have those on the back wheels. I have my air tools and my different size sockets for the bolts on the uh, wheels. And then obviously there's gonna be quite a few other tools that are needed. I'm gonna go over them as we go through this install. I know for sure there's Torx screws across the front here. Um, but outside of that, it's mostly um, different screws on the bottom and etc. So as I get to those and find that I need new tools, um, I will grab them. Now, <clears throat> I know for a fact I'm going to need a Torx T15. Um, those are for these across the top. But again, as we get to other ones, we will do it. So there you go. Last look of the front end of the vehicle with the stock grill in place. So first things first, let's get the car jacked up. Before I do that, put my uh, wheel blocks in place in the rear. But car's up on the jacks, show you where I jacked it up at, go from there. So you'll see the jack point I used is the forward point. There's two different points. I jacked it up from that point, put the stand under there. Did the same on both sides. Now we're ready to go. Take the wheels off and we'll start disassembly of the entire front end. I have my air gun. You can also use a ratchet if you need it. All right then guys, first up is the wheel well. You're gonna have to disattach the inner fender um, liner from the front end to be able to pull it off. So this does use a T15. You can use a drill bit or do it by hand. I'm choosing to do it by hand. You'll see there's one, two, three, and four, and that's just off camera, sorry. Four. There might be a fifth, but we shall see. Nope. And it looks like it's just the four. And we also have some bolts underneath that will need to be removed. But you can see there's a bolt right up in here, right here that needs to be removed that separates it from the upper fender to the lower fender. Luckily this, this side fender right here isn't coming off. 
So we just have to disconnect this from uh, here on both sides. And then also there's a couple, there's a couple screws below where our splitter is, or if you don't have a splitter, still those bolts are there, screws are there. You'll need to remove those as well. That will basically loosen the interior um, padding and pieces from the front fender. So I'm gonna finish doing that and get to the next steps. So I'm using a seven millimeter socket to get to this bolt right here. I'm gonna get in there and try to see if there's any other bolts. Yeah, there's a couple others. There's three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the bottom piece first, so that way I can uh, really get up underneath here. So there's three total bolts here that are holding this front fender. So there's another one, two, three, four bolts underneath this wheel well on top of this bolt that will need to be, or on top of these three bolts that need to be removed. The thumb part is going to be putting this one back in. So we're loose in there. Now, I might, uh, I think I'm gonna go get my little drill. I think I'm gonna get my little drill. Those are both set. Those are sevens as well, but a drill will make this super easy. And let's see if I can fit it in there. Definitely easier. Three, you can get two with a drill. This one up here is at a really tight angle, so let me just, I'll show you with the camera. I'll see if I can get up in here. So, there, microphone backwards so you can actually hear me. So, right here, there's a screw here, there, there, and then there's one way, got my arms on the way, one right there. So there's four total holding you in, and again, the three that I removed earlier are right here. And uh, that looks like all the bolts that are holding the front end on to the main bumper, at least underneath the wheel wells. So, so this is what happens when I'm learning as I go. I think now we need to go up top and loosen some bolts and then go do the other side. So the screws we were removing, I don't know if you can see them, were over here. So they're they're basically holding the fender on there. Um, looks like this is something I use with a finishing tool. I'm gonna get a whole bunch of screws across the front. I'm gonna grab my finishing tool. There are two. Yep. So there's two tree clips on the left and right side. Using my finishing tool here. Just be careful, you don't want to scratch up your front bumper. There you go. Those are all released. Looks Doesn't look like you have to take it off. Doesn't look like you have to take this off. Okay. Okay, so we've taken the bolts off the top here. We've taken the bolts off the passenger side underneath the wheel well. 
Again, there's those four bolts up top. Um, up inside, there's the three bolts on the corner where your hash mark is. And then there's a couple bolts underneath that you need to remove. And then obviously the bolts to even expose um, behind the, uh, the padding or the dampening pad in the wheel well. So not too hard. How many bolts was that? That was, so there's 13 um, Torx 15 size uh, screws on the passenger side that need to be removed that I've run into so far. I'm gonna do a triple check once I get this other side undone. Um, and then there's the six up top plus the two tree clips. So, and then I'm gonna go do the 13 uh, screws on the driver's side now to hopefully, I think we'll have loosened the whole front end. I'm, there's probably some screws on the bottom I haven't gotten to yet, but we'll get there. Okay, so this side has the same setup. One, two, three, four bolts, and then the three screws. The only interesting thing is there's a wire harness in the way on this thing. So, just gotta push that out of the way. Okay guys, so I have both wheel fenders. All the bolts are removed from here. So the fender is no longer attached there. It's no longer attached up top, or I shouldn't say fender, but the front end. And same here. So it looks like the only, the only spot that's still holding on for dear life is the lower portion of the car. I'm gonna have to disconnect. I'm, it's gonna be hard to get this camera underneath the car to show you what I'm gonna do because I don't want to remove my front splitter to take off the front end. I'm going to take off the front end with my front splitter still installed. So this could be easier for you guys. If you don't have a front splitter, you only have to remove the bolts that are along the front end of your car. But if you do have a front splitter and because there's tape and everything holding it in place and you don't want to deal with that and try to slide it back into place because there's not much of a gap to get yeah, you'll know what I mean when you see it. Um, it looks like there's about eight bolts that we can remove that will loosen the whole bottom air structure or the, the dam structure underneath that um, seals the bottom of the engine bay. So I'm gonna remove those bolts and see what happens. Um, I'm gonna get another camera. I'm gonna leave this one how it is. So audio is gonna be a little crappy, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see the bolts I'm removing. What's up guys underneath the car, this is why Putting the car up on jack stands is actually beneficial. So I'm hoping you can kind of see here. So underneath here, there's a bolt here. There's a couple bolts under here, a couple bolts there, one there. But then there's one, two, three, four. Looks like so there's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts to remove underneath um, to where this whole piece should drop down, I'm guessing, this whole piece here. And then it will allow us to, I think we'll actually, we'll have to undo these no matter what. So four on the splitter on each side and then the ones underneath. Yeah, let's see how this goes. These ones are 10 millimeter. So there's one finishing tool piece. It's like one of those little slide locks where you just pull it out. Yeah, one of these things. So that definitely disconnects that for sure. 
disconnected. Dis Ooh. I think we're free. I think after undoing those bolts, the whole front end is free. So let's find out. I think the whole entire front end is free. This is where I would like to would have liked to have some help, but unfortunately all my numbers well yep, that's definitely loose. <laughs> It looks like on the driver's side, there is a wire harness that's attached right here. Needs to be removed. Found that out the hard way. Should have watched a little bit closer when I was up underneath there. Another use for the finishing tool. And I would leave that one underneath the car. It's a good thing I have two. So yeah, it's held in place with a little tree clip. So there's a harness just above, or just below the driver's side. Oh, you're gonna have those ones in the rear that were a nightmare to unplug. Oh, maybe not. There we go. Okay, now we're good to go. Here's the front end of the car without a bumper. Pretty nifty. And there's the front end and nicely it stands up on its own. Oh, I'm so happy it stands up on its own. On the Gen 5 it would not sit up on its own and you had to risk either laying it on its back or its front and having the paint get scratched. So, as you can see, you could do this by yourself. It's probably gonna be a little tough to put it back on um, by yourself, but it's doable. Um, I might ask for my wife or someone to come out and just make sure I get things lined up so it doesn't slip and fall. But next step is remove the stock grill and put the new grill that's sitting on that chair over there. Here we go. Alrighty then, now it's time for a little bit of fun. Thankfully, GM has designed this front end so it will stand upright. So I did prep an area big enough to put this out when, because I knew I was taking it off the car, obviously. But <clears throat> um, having it stand upright just made it that much easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn it around so we can see what I'm doing. So let's see. So the front grill. So I can see, the reason why you have to take off the whole front end, and I hope you guys could see this. Yeah. So this whole crunch barrier here, so this is put in place for impacts. Um, you have to take that off to be able to get the grill off. Um, and that's the primary reason why you need to take off the whole front end. You can't just reach up in there and pull it off very easily. So this piece looks to be held in place by quite a few clips uh, but it shouldn't be too hard to pull off I have a couple pairs of pliers here Set it up. so there's a metal clip here and a metal clip same on the other side and then there's two little plastic clips that are just like little push clips you push down it slides right off uh, I haven't looked at the underneath but I'm gonna see if I can get these metal clips off I hate these things. So there's one. And two. Okay, those were a little easy to install once you figured them out. <laughs> and that just slides right on out. Just like that. Set that to the side. So now the actual grill itself is held into place by quite a few little clips. And of course, they... and of course there's some metal. Close. 
Sorry, right here. So there's white clips in the corner, one up here and one on this corner. There are four of these little metal clips, one on the corner here and one on the second clip over, same on the other side. And then you have the big clips, these ones here that connected on these clips that held that bad boy in place. So. The rest are just little push clamp clips that should come off pretty easily. Let's see how easy it is. And of course they would attach this wire across the bottom. So you will need your finishing tool to loosen those uh, tree clips from the wire. Stock grill. No more. Now for the new grill. I don't know what's scarier, the fact that it's not like these pieces were hard to put on, but let's see. Okay. So those are all in place. So before you put this piece back on, we need to put those metal clips back on. Those clips sucked. I'm sure for all you guys, it'll be a hell of a lot easier. I think I'm just dumb and can't figure it out. But now, it's time for the first look. We'll see what this bad boy looks like with the new grill in place. You're gonna see it before me. What? That looks sick. There you go. Not completely installed on the car yet, but. That looks good. Alrighty then, that grill seemed a lot harder to put in than I think it should have been, but it really wasn't hard. Just those metal clips, they hate me. I swear, GM, your metal clips hate me, but it's done. It's over there. New front end's on. But now we need to put the new front end on the actual car. And that's going to be the tricky part. So I think I'm going to get some help from my bride in making sure this goes on smoothly. But maybe I'll try it on my own first. Let's see. Let's see how I do. I'm just worried I'm going to scratch the paint. And I really don't want to scratch the paint. So let's do this. Can you do it? You can do it. Just keep your distance. Line it up. Let's 
It's up there. Okay, you don't need someone to help you. Not too difficult. Ha! Ha ha! Okay, I'm gonna put a couple screws in up top just to make sure this, and I'm not gonna tighten them all the way. I'm just more so putting them here so the front end doesn't fall. <laughs> it's not like it's that easy just to go sliding off, but you know, better be safe than sorry. So the nice thing is, is you can do this by yourself. You don't really need help. Now, if you had help, putting things together and taking things apart would probably go faster, especially if you have two sets of tools and all that greatness. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down below and uh, put all the screws and bolts back in underneath. So there you have it guys. I've installed all the bolts back on. The only thing left to do is put the front wheels on and drop the car and then do a walk around of the front end to see what it looks like. So there you go. Everything's buckled, buttoned back up, back up. No extra screws, that's always a good thing. So let's go ahead and uh, get the wheels back on Take some photos of this bad boy. Okay, now that we got the wheels and everything down, the car's off the jacks, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up these bolts here in the engine bay. go. So 
So there you have it guys. That is the full install of the front grill. Now, the steps I took were the steps I felt should be followed. There was a few extra clips and stuff, but they were the same clips that were in the, the front end. So I think they send you a whole bunch of the clips assuming that you don't have the stock clips already. So you can reuse the ones. If anything, if you want to sell your front, um, your stock one, you can send all those extra bolts and screws along with it. So pretty easy and straightforward. I just reused all the parts that were on my car because I didn't necessarily need to swap them out. So the same pieces, same parts. But as always guys, thanks for watching the video and until next time, I'll see you on the road.